If you're a human resources professional and you are interested in having more impact at work using data, to have more impact with analytics, this is the video for you. I'm going to make an assumption here that you're an HR professional, you're interested in getting started with HR analytics, but you don't have a technical background. Maybe you've never coded before, maybe you're not familiar with data analysis. I'm going to assume an absolute beginner for the purposes of this video. What I'm going to show you is a, a roadmap for acquiring very valuable data analysis skills that you can use in the HR space, but don't necessarily require a huge amount of effort on your part. For example, I'm not going to say that you need to go learn a bunch of mathematics or that you're going to necessarily need to learn a bunch of coding to actually get started. And in fact, the first two stages of this roadmap use trusty old Excel. So let's go take a look at the roadmap. Here we are in PowerPoint. This is how I'm going to show you the roadmap. And the first stage, as I indicated, is trusty old Excel. So the first stage is all you need are basic Excel skills. You do a little bit of investment in learning a few things. It's not difficult at all. That's the kinds of skills that I tend to focus on in my content, skills that are accessible to any professional, regardless of their background. In the beginning, you just start with Excel. So probably the single most valuable thing that you could start with as an HR professional trying to use analytics is business analysis. And I have a very specific definition for this. Um, there's actually a video on my YouTube channel that talks about this more in depth. You can check it out here. Don't click it yet. Um, it's a video on KPI analysis. And essentially, at this first stage, what you do is you learn how to analyze a key performance indicator, a KPI or an OKR or a metric. They're called different things in different companies, but essentially it's some sort of process measurement over time. And let's talk about what you can do hypothetically once you learn what I define as business analysis. So I've never worked in HR. I've never been a human resources professional. However, I have been a manager at companies. So most of my examples that I will use in this video, probably all of them actually now that I think about it, all come from my time as a manager working at Microsoft. And I had an HR rep that I worked with and that experience taught me some of the things that those HR analytics professionals at Microsoft cared about. Okay, so when I worked at Microsoft, we had this concept of bad attrition. That is, employees that were working at the company that were good, they were making impact, they were the kinds of employees that you wanted to keep around, but yet they left the company. They went to go work for a competitor, let's say, maybe Google or Facebook or something like that. So we had bad attrition. So one of the things that you can analyze at this first stage of the roadmap, if you know how to do KPI analysis, is let's say that you have a monthly bad attrition rate percentage. So for example, in organization A, over the, over the past 12 months, you've recorded what percentage of their attrition was considered bad attrition, right? Because there's always attrition, but what percentage of it was bad? That is good employees that you don't want to leave. So you got 12 data points over time. Right, for organization A. And you can analyze that data, but what's even more powerful with this KPI analysis technique is get 12 data points from organization B for the same time frame. So let's say it's 2020. So you got bad attrition, monthly bad attrition rates in 2020 for organization A and bad monthly attrition rates in 2020 for organization B. Then what you can do is you can compare those two collections of data using the KPI analysis technique. And it is a statistical analysis technique, but don't freak out. It's very, very simple. It's, it's way more simple than you would possibly imagine to conduct this kind of analysis. And then what you can do is you can literally say, okay, is there a statistically significant difference between the bad attrition rate of organization A and organization B? And, that, and if you find that, then you can say, okay, well, why is that? Is it a management problem? Is it the nature of the work that they do? That sort of thing. But that is a very powerful HR analytics scenario where KPI analysis will be very helpful for you. And once again, it is very easy. You actually use a chart, a data visualization to do the analysis and creating them in Excel is wickedly easy. Like I said, you can check out a KPI analysis video on my channel up here. Don't click it yet though, because we're not, we're not done with the roadmap. Okay, let's go ahead and go back and take a look at stage two. So stage two is 
linear regression, okay? Don't, don't panic. I know that sounds real technical, but once again, notice that we're going to be in Excel, right? These are things that we're doing in Excel. KPI analysis is very easy. Rudimentary calculations, anybody can do it. You don't even need actual Excel tables, by the way. You can just put the data in cells and it works just fine. Linear regression is a little bit of a step up. However, here's the killer thing. You let Excel handle the math for you. And that lets you as the HR professional focus on the concepts. How do I appropriately use linear regression with my HR data? And how do I make sure that the, the results that I get from my linear regression analyses are actually legitimate? That's what you focus on and you let Excel handle the math. And by the way, not surprisingly, I have a video on this topic as well. It's up here, don't click on it yet. If you're interested in learning more, you can go ahead and click up there. Okay, so let's talk about what you can do with linear regression in the HR analytics space. You've got a collection of data and maybe you got it from your IT department or maybe you just collect it manually in an Excel spreadsheet, whatever it is, but you've got a bunch of data. One of the things that you could do, for example, with a linear regression analysis is you could take the tenure data so a bunch of employees, like every row in your spreadsheet is an employee. And every column essentially is some sort of characteristic of that employee's tenure at the company. What level of education did they have? You know, what were their review scores? Any sort of kinds of piece of data that you might record in the HR system about this individual employee over time. And then maybe the last column of data in your spreadsheet is the months of service that they have. What you can then do with that data is perform a linear regression analysis where you try to predict how long an employee's tenure was based on all of these other data factors. And then what that allows you to do, once again, assuming that all the data is legit, and of course you will learn how to determine that, but assuming the data is all legit, what the linear regression analysis will tell you is which of those factors, which of those columns of data are most impactful for predicting how long an employee is going to stick around. And then it will give you some sort of estimate of like, not only which ones are important, but how important in terms of like, let's say folks that work in your manufacturing division stick around for a really long time. So the fact that they work in the manufacturing division might have a really large number associated with it, maybe 12.7 months or something like that. So what that tells you is that not only is working in manufacturing important, but it adds 12.7 months on average to the tenure of an employee. So that's, that's wildly useful stuff from an HR analytics perspective. So linear regression. So those two things, by the way, might be all that you need right now for your HR analytics work. Maybe that's all you need. KPI analysis, linear regression analysis, maybe that's all you need. If it is, cool, stop there. But if it's not, if you want more power, let's, kick, let's go back over to the roadmap and see what that looks like. So you can consider this next step here, SQL, SQL, Structured Query Language, as optional. And the reason why I'm gonna say that is because in many large organizations, HR professionals don't have direct access to databases. If you do, then SQL might be a very, very good thing for you to learn next. But if you don't, you might be like, well, it's not really a good use of my time right at this point because my company doesn't allow me to fire SQL at a database to get my own data. But let's assume for the sake of argument that you are an HR professional and you do have the ability to execute SQL, SQL, against your database. Okay, so I probably should back up. <laughs> Sorry about that. So let's talk about this for a second. Let's assume that you don't know what SQL, SQL is. Okay, so SQL is the programming language, the by far and away the single most common programming language used to access databases of any kind. If you're not familiar with databases, they actually come in many shapes and flavors and brands and that sort of thing, but they all tend to have one thing in common. They have either an SQL interface, a SQL interface that you use to talk to them, to query them, to get data out of them, or they have something that's very, very SQL, SQL-like that they use. So SQL is an extremely useful thing to know if you want to use data to drive business results. Because if you know how to do SQL, you just start using it to grab data from the database. So for example, you can query databases, 
You can pull new data out of your HR system, for example. You can wrangle data. That's this idea of like, I'll pull the data out of the database and then I will clean it and shape it and massage it and get into a particular format that I want, maybe to put like, for example, in my Excel spreadsheet, so then I can do a linear regression analysis on it. That's what wrangling data means. And you can also actually do individual data analyses directly in SQL. You can code up your SQL query to actually do the analysis, fire it against the database, and then use the power of the database server to handle it. And this allows you to like crunch millions and millions and millions of rows of data where Excel isn't going to be able to handle that very well. So you allow the database to do that for you. Here's something that's really important. If you have basic Excel skills, you can learn SQL. It's actually quite easy. And not shockingly, I actually have a tutorial series here on my YouTube channel that takes an Excel user with no programming background and uses their Excel knowledge to teach them SQL in a fun and easy way. And if that interests you, you can check out the video up here. Don't click it yet, of course, because we're not done with the roadmap, but it's up there in case you want to take a look at it. That's, about, that's enough about SQL. Last stage of the roadmap is our programming. And don't freak out. Don't freak out. First and foremost, once again, our programming is easy to learn if you have an Excel background. If you haven't kind of picked up on this yet, this is kind of my thing <laughs> where I'd like, look, here's how, you, here's how you conduct valuable analyses in Excel. And if you need more power, guess what? Your Excel knowledge allows you to learn SQL, which gives you a lot of more power. And then your Excel knowledge also allows you to learn our programming. And that's when things get really, really powerful. So R is awesome for HR analytics because first and foremost, it's easy for anybody to learn. Uh, all you need is some basic Excel background and you can learn R programming. And what R unlocks for you is data mining. And the way to think about data mining is simply this. I have a big pile of my HR data and I wanna analyze it and I wanna find interesting patterns. I wanna find interesting associations in the data that will help me be more effective as a human resources professional. Maybe design new programs, maybe tweak existing programs, maybe get rid of programs that don't necessarily result in anything that you're interested in, like increased tenure, for example. So R is basically the Swiss army knife of data analytics. You can use R to analyze data in any number of ways. Now, here are some cool aspects of what you can do with R. So you can perform machine learning and make no mistake, Machine learning is wildly useful in HR analytics. Super, super useful. And by the way, if you focus on the right, the right part, the right portion, what I call the 20% of machine learning, it's actually quite easy for any professional, no matter what your background is, to get up to speed using these powerful machine learning techniques to analyze your data. You can also perform cluster analyses, which are, hey, I've just got a pile of data. Can I group them into interesting groups and then take a look at them and say, oh, well, you know, this group of employees is really super interesting because they have these characteristics, which we didn't know about before. So cluster analysis is super interesting. So here's an awesome example of where you can use market basket analysis. And by the way, this type of scenario also would work with machine learning, by the way. So you don't necessarily have to learn both. If you're going to pick or choose, you might want to just start with machine learning because it's got a lot of power to it. But both machine learning and market basket analysis could be used for this particular type of HR scenario. So let's say you have a university recruitment program. So you got, your company goes out and you try and recruit university graduates from top institutions around the country, wherever you live. I live in the United States, so let's say it's the US. And you want to understand of those university recruits, those folks that come in straight out of college into your company, what are the various factors that are highly associated with a high promotion velocity? So for example, folks to get promoted out of a junior college level role into a, say, a normal professional level role within two years, let's say. And you want to know what are the factors that are disproportionately predictive, disproportionately associated with that promotion velocity. Both machine learning and market basket analysis are perfect for that sort of scenario. And if that's something that's interesting to you, that ability to mine that kind of association that I just described, go ahead and click up here. I've got another video, which basically tells you 
how easy it is for you as an Excel user, as an HR professional, to use your Excel skills, learn R, and then once you learn R, then apply that to learning machine learning and then unlock the kinds of analytics that I'm talking about. If you're interested in learning more, click up here, of course, as I just said throughout the video, or you can also check the description below. There's also some additional resources there. HR analytics for beginners. You've got this if you want it. Until next time, stay healthy and happy data sleuthing.